All right. Let me make sure nothing's in the way of anything. Um, so today I'm going to be presenting um, the Jazzy Leaf. Uh, my name is Victoria Phillips, and I really value the human experience, and I want people to be able to escape reality and enjoy themselves in the spaces I create. And these are my two advisors. We have Abby Massey, who's my internal advisor, who is a professor here at UMass Dartmouth. And my external advisor, Kat Monahan, who's an interior designer and a furniture designer at Red Thread. Both of them have been really amazing with this process and helping um, with ideas and answering any questions. So I really appreciate both of them. So why am I doing this project? Um, as a designer, I'm very interested in going into retail design. So um, for my project, I'm doing dispensary design, which is gonna challenge me as a designer to create a successful shopping experience, but still following strict laws that have to do with marijuana in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, dispensaries have become much more prominent, prominent in the modern day, and this type of design allows me creative freedom with marketing and brand identity. So who am I designing for? The Jazzy Leaf is an up and coming dispensary business that is looking to open their first store in Dorchester, Massachusetts. They're looking for an upscale, more luxury feel with educational aspects so they can give their guests the best customer service. And they also want a practical layout for improved employee efficiency. So how is, um, how is me designing the space going to benefit the client? Well, it's going to jumpstart their business. It will create a fun and interactive space for the users, as well as a safe educational space for cannabis users altogether. And it will also create a safe and enjoyable uh, work environment for the employees. So my site is located on 1524 Dorchester Ave in Boston, Massachusetts. You could see from this pink little diamond where it sits right here. Um, the building is facing east, facing east, so the sun is going to uh, rise in front of the building and set behind the building. Uh, we have some food amenities as well as shopping, lots of transportation around this space, which is really useful for the clients around it. It's very easily accessible, as well as parking behind the building. Um, and some st statistics that definitely benefit why I chose this site specifically. The consumer spending in this area is almost at about $500 million, um, as well as the household income being around 73,000. So the area um, is, uh, the spending and money around the area is a little bit higher, so it will definitely benefit um, the assets of the business. And going back to transportation, um, one of the main train stops is about 0.2 miles from my site. So again, very easily accessible. My design problem is I'm using an existing space, but renovating a portion of it to fit my program, as well as making sure it follows the laws of Massachusetts. So my challenge is trying to design a successful retail experience while still following those strict law, uh, marijuana laws in the state. I will be focusing on the whole building as it is only one level. So the whole space is about 3,182 square feet. It is a business occupancy and uh, the occupancy load is 130 people. So who's going to be using the space? Uh, first, we have uh, the browser who may come into the space and want to shop at their leisure, maybe spend some time looking at the different options and then order when they're ready. We also have the new user who is new to cannabis and maybe wants to speak with a bud tender one-on-one -on -one to figure out what might be best for him to try. And also we have the experienced user who's been smoking for almost eight years and know what he, um, he knows what he likes. So he orders online and he picks it up quick and easy. And then last but not least, we have the staff who's going to be circulating the whole space um, as well as um, completing different tasks and assisting guests throughout the space. 
connecting the points of sales back to um, my types of users. We have kiosks, which will be located all around uh, kiosk readily available for them when they're ready to order instead of um, hopping in line. Uh, we have the bud tender who is available for anyone who wants to sit down and maybe go over um, what they want to try or what they're interested in trying or what might be best for them. And then we have online pickup, um, uh, which is for the experienced user or anyone who wants to come uh, in the building quickly, just pick up their order and go. So moving further into my design concept, the Jazzy Leaf is a Boston dispensary on the corner of Dorchester Ave and Park Street, which is a very busy corner. Um, this Art Deco inspired dispensary takes a fun modern twist on 1920s elements and it will bring the guest experience to life with multiple different architectural forms and ways of shopping. Throughout the space, there will be educational components on, uh, for both the new and experienced users, which will promote the safe use of cannabis products. And the Jazzy Leaf prides itself on its welcoming and educational environment and high quality products. Here are some images uh, that I found throughout uh, my design development that really um, inspired me throughout the whole process. Um, as well as this quick little clip um, that I found, um, basically just looking at the movement of the dress uh, as well, that helped me um, throughout my design development. Um, I started to create a party model based off of this uh, image I found. I wanted to explore um, this image in more of a 3D aspect and how I can use um, these forms um, in a 3D form within my space. So it's not finished, but here are some progress pictures. Here is um, an inspiration board of more architectural elements that inspired me throughout this process. Um, a lot of um, uh, curved arches uh, really inspired me, as well as some like specific material elements um, that really reflect uh, the 1920s. Specifically for my concept, I want to focus on a 1920s flapper dress. So how does this relate back to my spaces and um, my building as a whole? Um, I see it as the top of the dress is the entry or ID check. Um, it's more structured. Um, it's a lot more simplified. And then as you move down to the middle of the dress, uh, which would be front of house, you'd see more of those fun details, more of those intricate details. And as you move further down the dress would be back of house. Uh, this shows more of like the flowiness of the fringe and it goes back to being more simplified. So I have two block diagram layouts. Um, people's opinions or feedback on them. So first I have my first option. Both of these options are very similar. So we have the ID check, which is a larger vestibule, almost like a reception area, but it's just um, where you get your ID check before going into the space. Um, it is required for dispensaries. Um, as you walk into the space, we have some displays with the kiosk on the sidewall, a more open seating and customer, uh, customer circulation area. We have some vendor rooms and one-on-one -on -one rooms and uh, merchandise area. A larger terminal checkout area. So if the lines get larger, uh, larger there's more um, employees to cash out and uh, efficiently get those customers out. Um, then you enter into the bathroom and the break room, which is right off um, the terminals. For security purposes, I didn't want to do any hallways. This just makes it um, a little bit more harder for anyone who may not supposed to be um, who may not supposed to be in the space specifically. It's just an extra security caution. Um, I have the manager's office uh, right in the back, and then the inventory and secure room um, at the end of everything, as well as a loading dock and unloading dock. 
Um, you'll see over here that um, the different colors show egress areas, customer areas, employee work areas, and employee non-work areas. So like I said before, um, these block diagrams are very similar, uh, just slightly different in the retail portion. Um, for this diagram, I decided to put more merchandise displays on parallel to the original ones I have against the wall, um, as well as lining up some seating off of the merchandise displays, but everything else. Now going into more uh, preliminary furniture plans, this is option one, just gives you more of an idea of like sizes and uh, circulation, as well as um, some pre preliminary furniture uh, choices. And then I have my option two as well that shows the difference between um, the slight difference I made in the two. I have some preliminary finishes that I found throughout, um, just keeping with my color scheme. I have some upholstery, um, some metals, some paint, some flooring, just to uh, give kind of an overview of what I'm, uh, the direction I'm kind of going in with the uh, material selections. And then um, I wanted to include the well, uh, how I'm implicating well building standards. Um, I took some standards from air, light, comfort, water, and fitness. And then all these icons are shown where they will be implemented in the space. And then I have my checklist of what I'm actually implementing in the space. So a lot of this um, is very valuable, especially for retail. Um, so a lot of this definitely has to be implemented in a retail setting. I have my um, progress 3D um, entrance of the front of the building. And then I have some exterior window views. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Here's some inspiration. I really want to use LED movable signage um, at the entrance of the space to kind of bring customers um, in more. So here's some inspo of some LED signs I found. And um, here's an elevation of some um, uh, pictures or images that I want to implicate as LED signs in my Windows displays. Um, I'm very open to feedback, so give it all to me, and thank you for listening. <laughs> great. Thank you so much, Tori. That was a, that was really a great way to start and kick off our midterm reviews. I'm going to ask that you just go to your slide deck, so that way we can um, sort of, as people sort of respond, you have that all lined up. And... Um, I'm going to put Kat on the spot as she was your um, external thesis advisor and see if she'd like to start. That was awesome. I'm very impressed with how much, how far you've come from the very beginning. Um, just knowing the progress that you've made since our first meeting, it's a lot of work and I really congratulate you on that, especially just that this is midterm. Um, I love how you really laid everything out and kind of showed us uh, some of the gaps that you have to fill in your presentation. I thought that was really helpful um, just to see what your progress is like. Um, I'll go through some of my notes. Uh, the layout looks awesome. I really love how it's relating back to your concept and a lot of the architectural elements that you're inspired by. It's very cohesive. Uh, the color scheme looks great. All of the forms and the graphics look really nice. Um, it's very easy to follow, easy to understand, um, but it's it's a it's very engaging at the same time. Um, I didn't you know get bored or get trailed off looking at any slide, um, which was awesome. Um, a couple things just to check for typos and look at text alignment. Um, just kind of little graphic things. Um, I don't know if just PowerPoint have like a spell check that might be a good thing just to run through at the end um, or even get someone else's eyes on it just to check for for some of that stuff, especially when you have 
um, all uppercase letters, it can be really difficult to spot some of those, those typos. Um, I love the little personal logo that you put in at one of the beginning slides. I want to say slide five. I love that. Is that like your personal brand logo or is that more for the project? It is a more uh, updated logo that I recently made. I love it. I think it looks awesome. It's very, it's a very fun graphic um, that relates back to your project, which I really love. Um, and, and definitely shows a little, a little flavor of the kind of style you like. So I really like that. That was a great addition. Um, the site map was awesome. Uh, I really like how you touch on a lot of these different elements that are then also going to relate back to well, which is nice. I love how you mentioned the sunlight. So I think that that was a really clever thing to talk about. And I like how you visually drew it out. Um, so for next steps, think about how that might impact your design. Uh, think about what time of day people might be in the space. What are those, what hours is it open? What hours is it closed? Um, and how that location might impact one side of the building versus the other. Um, and how it would impact like, the exterior design as well. If you want to add any clear story windows or if there's any, you know, demo or anything extra you want to do to the facade. Um, I loved the users and the point of sale breakdown, great explanation. The graphics look awesome. I love how you related the two together. Um, that made a lot of sense. And I really like the, the graphics that you have, but I think it's smart to add little... Um, renderings even throughout to start giving a peek of what we're going to see further on in the presentation to start getting people excited early on. Um, concept statement, images, all of that, the video, great. Um, on your, if you can go to that slide, the text that you have, I would start to look at bolding or italicizing some words, similarly to I saw how you did on a, a previous slide, just to pull out some of the more important elements. Um, otherwise, I think this looked great. I love how you talked about security and laws and things like that earlier on but I feel like I want a slide on that also. Maybe there's one slide that relates to some of the laws, or you can even start implementing that with some graphics as you do your floor plans. I think there are different ways you can play around with it, but some of the laws, maybe some of the Massachusetts code issues that you might run into as you go. Um, and then, yeah, I think that would be a great addition. Um, I love the inspiration board, block diagrams and furniture layouts look really great. If you want to go to those options, um, yeah, I thought these looked really nice. I like how you color coded everything. So looking at these two, because I know that you want feedback on which direction you might go in, um, actually go to the furniture plans because that was like the next level to the block diagrams, which I really like that you did this. So personally, I kind of lean a little bit more toward option one, because it's reminding me a bit more of your concept in terms of flow through the space. I also wonder, just thinking about how much you focused on security, you want to make sure that all of your point of sale, wherever employees are going to be stationed, they're going to have visual sight lines to any and every customer in the space at all times. So very smart how you put the manager's office in that corner, as I remember we discussed earlier on, because you could add some kind of one-way transparency Element so the manager always has access of the floor, but I think in option two, when you're starting to build out this form and the center, you start to lose some of that, that clear visibility from one side of the space to the other, especially 
when someone gets brought in through the vestibule, they'll say, you know, go ahead. And then they'll kind of call the people inside to let them know they're coming in. So you want to have direct visibility to that door as well. And I do like how these are two very different experiences. This one feels almost more like you could be meandering through the space. It's almost forcing the circulation a little bit more. But I, I feel like option one is more successful because you do have so many different user types that option two almost starts forcing the circulation too much. But I feel like part of your concept and part of the success of the space is that those three user types that you define are going to have such different experiences in circulating through the space in option one, and it will create different experiences for each user, which I think would be really successful to tie back into, you know, some of your main design problems. So I, I'm leaning toward option one on this. I think option one is more successful in terms of of your concept and kind of the flow that I, I, it sounds like you want through the space. Um, I think this is a really great, you know, halfway point for how much you've developed this. Um, and I loved the integration of all of your well research. The exterior explorations are awesome. I'm really excited to see where you take that. I'm excited to see like a rendering of the exterior too. I think that would be really fun. There's some really fun ways that we can play with lighting. So I think the neon lights will be really awesome to render. Um, yeah, I mean, so what are you thinking about, about those two options? Just with me giving a, a little bit of feedback. I do you agree, do you feel like that's? I definitely agree. Um, okay, I cool. originally, I originally, since I started doing the block diagrams, I originally gravitate more towards the first option. Yeah. And then it can almost become more of like that radial circulation path that we talked about, having something really special happen in the middle of the space. Because you started to root like a little seating area there, which I think is really successful. And I know that you want to implement like some kind of screening, um, like architectural screen. But I think that can be implemented still in, in option one. I think we just take that wall that you started to build out in option two and create that somewhere else, create a really fun display. Maybe it's shielding part of the seating area. Maybe it's this curved custom display and maybe that's what you end up detailing, you know? Mm. So I think you can kind of merge the two in a way. Yeah. But I think start with the base of, of option one. Yeah. Awesome right. job, awesome progress. Thank Looks you. Great. Thank you so much. Yay. Thanks, Kat. Let's open it up if anyone else um, of the external critics were welcoming your feedback and thoughts. I just have a couple quick notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I really like your cohesiveness of the entire presentation. I think, especially since you're doing retail, um, that's and sort of takes it an extra step since you're not just designing the space, you're kind of designing the whole experience and the feel uh, from the very beginning and it runs all the way through. So extra kudos for that. Um, just, you know, from a retail, taking the entire thing through, you know, from the logo to the, you know, everything. So that's great. Um, I did have a question on your layout options. I personally have never been in a dispensary, so I don't really know how this works. But I'm just curious, um, since your POS is so far from the door, um, I don't, you know, is everything, does everything need to be handed to you? You know, is everything in a case as opposed to sometimes people put their POS near the door so that no one can just like, you know, grab something and run out? I don't really know if that's an issue here because everything needs to come out of the case or whatever, but I don't know. How does that yes. work? So um, display items and dispensaries are usually not actual product that's given to the customer. So all the products that are actually distributed out are um, behind closed doors. So the display items are more for display, more to show like kind of what they, um, if it's flower, what it kind of looks like, or if they're selling like pieces like bongs or um, pipes, like uh, like glass pieces like that. Um, 
that's more so where the displays come in. Okay. So is it less of an issue to have the POS located right near the door? So no one's, you know, running in and grabbing something and running out or something. Yes. Okay. Um, just wanted to clarify that. Like I said, I've never been in a dispensary. Um, and then one other thing that just came to mind at, you, on your very, I think it's your very last slide. Um, when you're talking about the LED possibilities, um, one thing to know, I just want to make sure, especially from an outside perspective, that you're giving the right impression so people know, you know, when they're driving by, what's in this space. And I think the graphics you're leaning toward might not necessarily showcase what you're showing inside. But one thought that I had might be this might be the perfect place for you to institute that um, kind of marijuana leaf within the arch as you are. LED in the windows because it has that, you know, it has the leaf in it. So you kind of have the nod to what it is without saying, you know, we sell marijuana here. Um, so that, and I think it would look really cool as an LED. Um, so that might be something maybe worth swapping out just mm -hmm. for your exterior windows. You know, maybe you have these inside when you're already in there and you can kind of get a little off topic. Um, but from the exterior, just keep that in mind, you know, people might you want to be clear about what is happening inside the space and you want to present, um, even if it's just a little nod, you know, that, but again, that might be a good place to, to bring that, that form in. But anyway, those are my notes. Thank it looks you. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. It's funny. Cause I, I had seen it before and I didn't even think about that from the exterior. Now that I'm looking at this slide, I'm like, Oh, I'm going in for a drink, but I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, or like I, a dance studio or it, something. Yeah, know. no, no, it's, it's, that's why this is such a wonderful opportunity at midterm to get all different, you know, viewpoints and perspectives. Right. Does anyone else have anything to contribute? I know that um, Abby, Steph, and I do, Tori, and you'll hear from us um, offline so we don't um, extend our, our 10 hour day even longer. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Tori. Congratulations. And thank you for going first. We always appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, everyone. All right. And we're going to have um, Talia go up next. Can I see? Oh, there she is. Okay, great. There I am. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> like, why is and that not working? Abby and Steph, I added you as co-host because I see people coming in and out. and. Um, just so that way I'm not the only one keeping an eye on that in case we miss it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, there we go. So my name is Talia Bavosi and I'm going to be presenting my biophilic recovery center. And before I get into that, I just wanted to thank my advisors very much and appreciate them for helping me throughout this entire project. And my internal thesis advisor is Abby and my external thesis advisor is Grace Heron. And she works with Global Partners as a store design specialist. And she's actually an alumni from Mount Ida too. And then, so get, Talia, getting started. Me. You have blocks covering some of your presentation. I do. Um, am I the only person that sees that? Please no, tell I see me it. I'm not. Okay. Zoom, All right. Windows, if you can slide them off to the side or hide them. There's right. one on the top, one on the right hand side. Let me share just the PowerPoint. Maybe that will be helpful. Mm, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Talia. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I didn't no, want to also good. not see your presentation. <laughs> There you okay. go. Yeah, let's see if that works. Okay, is that better? No. They're still there. <laughs> Let me try pulling up my... um. Like, what do they look like? Is it like things on my screen? It, just it like looks like it's the Zoom window. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? So if Yeah, you it looks like it's like us on the side and then the, the bar at the top. Oh my god, that is so weird. How do I get rid of that? Oh wait, hide a video panel. There it is. Yeah, if you could okay. hide that. Okay. 
Okay, is that better? Yes, perfect. Okay. okay. I will mute. No, you're fine. Okay, so my location is actually going to be in um, West Boylston, Massachusetts. And it's actually the existing building is a senior center for um, West Boylston. And it was constructed in 2019, so it's very new, up to code. And it has plenty of parking and patio space. And it already has a residential look to it, which is exactly what I'm going for. And some adjacencies next to it is there is a police station actually very close to it. Um, main transportation is basically Route 12. It's pretty much just driving. There's not really any commuter buses or trains or anything over there. And there are multiple hospitals within 10 miles both ways of the um of the location, which is really helpful just in case. And a little bit about the interior of the existing space. Um, it's about 10,000 square feet. It currently has seating for 100 people, a restaurant, not a restaurant, a kitchen, uh, wellness rooms, exercise rooms, and some a little bit about my client statement. And first, I'm going to start my personal statement. Growing up, I witnessed loved ones and family members struggle with addiction, and I that's kind of the driving passion between this uh, presentation. I wanted to design a recovery center that kind of treats addiction a little bit different than the normal treatment plans, which would be like a 12-step program and things like that. There'll still be therapy, but it's actually going to use more biophilic treatments in the building. So um, my client will be people struggling with addiction and people that have tried traditional inpatient recovery centers and it haven't really worked for them. Um, I am designing this space to kind of offer a different treatment center in central Massachusetts. There's already a lack of them and I feel like it's really important to have different options. And also I wanted to show the healing effect of biophilia and how to use it in a design and to spread awareness. And some of the benefits of biophilia is that it aids physical and mental well-being. It improves productivity, reduces stress, blood pressure, heart rates, and increases retention rates too. Some of the design problems I am definitely running into is trying to use as much of the existing building as I can to fit my program needs, which has proved to be a little bit difficult. I definitely had to add on to it. Um, trying to incorporate biophilic elements while using it as an aesthetic method and as a treatment. And to create a recovery center that has a residential feel and look while adhering to codes of a commercial and a healthcare setting. I am going to be designing the entire building, but my focus areas are going to be the single room bedrooms and bathrooms, uh, the living room area, and the main entrance lobby area that will showcase an atrium, the reception, and in the bedrooms. Each bedroom will have like a little patio space, so I'm going to show that in a rendering as well. And my living room space will also have patio views and out to the um, garden. A little bit about my sustainability and well is that I'm going to use constant fresh air in the building to promote the biophilia. I'm going to have rainwater collection tanks to help water all the plants and trying to use it as the main source of water for the entire building as well. Uh, there will be healthy food options, natural daylight, multiple walking paths to promote uh, movement individual thermostats in each room, uh, noise pollution control, paints with low VOCs, and the biophilic elements to heal the mind. Some of my sketches and bubble diagrams, they have definitely changed a lot. So the one off to the left is what I've mainly decided to go with. So I ended up having to add two wings on to the building over here, the single bedrooms with bathrooms and the detox center. 
And I have some more bubbles over here showing kind of what I first started with and how things have moved around and how I expanded the building going from over here to like having the wings. My concept is very organic to go with the biophilia. So you're gonna see lots of neutrals, greens, stone, um, anything that resembles more of like the earth as a whole is kind of gonna be what's gonna happen in this space to continue to help promote uh, the well being of the patients. And some of my preliminary finishes are the same lots of green, stone, neutrals, lots of wood elements. Um, so that's pretty much that. Some basic codes that I am running into is my building has a lot of occupancy types. So I have some exercise occupancy types, commercial kitchen, assemblies, and group one institutional for every part of my building, except the detox center is classified as a group two institutional, which will require more healthcare like codes, because that's going to be more of like a hospital setting in that wing, other than compared to like the rest of the building will be more like a residential scene. And I will have many ADA areas. So in the communal bathrooms, there is at least one handicap stall, one shower, everything's on one level too. So it doesn't need to be any elevators or stairs. All the corridors are at least five feet. Um, all the single bedrooms will have um, ADA bathrooms too. And all the bedrooms will be ADA. And all of the rooms will be big enough to have the radius for a wheelchair turning, which is very helpful. And I ended up doubling the square footage of this building too. So now it's about at 20,000 square feet. So I definitely added on to kind of fit all the bedrooms and everything. That's kind of the problem I ran into. And now these are my new construction plans. So these are without furniture, but you would enter down here and then there's a separate waiting room and check-in for family as, I don't know if anybody's been in a rehab, but you can't just like walk in there. So there has to be a place for family to sit, to be able to check in, to then be able to go in. And as you walk in, you'll see a giant atrium over here that you can actually go in and sit. And that will extend up into the ceiling and actually be open. So natural sunlight and rain and everything can get in. And that will also have seating around it as the cafeteria is over here. Reception will be over here. You'll see that in my furniture plan. And this is a big open area that connects to the gym, the multi-purpose therapy section over here. The kitchen is over here. Then you go out to the living room. There's also outside access over here that will have a large garden area. Then you could walk over here and then this will be have more security clearances. This will be a private area for the patients. So no family will be able to go into this, these sections. And I did decide to have different levels of rooms. So the rooms on the main building are all double rooms and they share a communal bathroom. And as you go over here, you'd walk down the hallway and to the right is the detox room. So yet again, that will be the more healthcare setting. And then to the left are actually options for single bedrooms for people that feel like they need that. Um, they can choose that option. And then over here, are just my furniture plans. So the same layout, just all filled up with furniture and everything. So you can see like the beds, nightstands, each bedroom has access to the outside. They'll have multiple windows in each bedroom. Uh, and that includes the DSOC center will have lots of sunlight, but they will not have access to the outside. And you can see that in the furniture plans that there's no doors and lots of area for the staff and nurses to also go. In each wing, they have their own rooms and lunch areas as well. 
And this is just a 3D view of the building. So you can kind of see the atriums a little bit better, how the glass works. And on the inside, there will be little pads and seating. And you can see the entrance a little bit better over here as well and how it goes through the space and outside. And this one's just the wings in 3D. And there will be tiny little atriums over in the singles bedrooms. You'll not be able to go in them, but you can still obviously see in there. And they will also work to help collect the rainwater underneath in the tank. And that is it. And if anybody has any questions, I would love to hear it and some feedback. Great. Thank you so much, Talia. That was that was wonderful. Um, let's open it up and we'll start with um, your external um, advisor, which is Grace. Hello. Uh, I think you did a great job. You got really far from from a month ago. So I'm proud of that. <laughs> Um, let me check my notes here. I think I can you go back to your bubble diagrams? Yes, right here. So I actually kind of like the bubble diagram a little bit better because, and I know that we talked about this with the multi purpose in the gym being near the group therapy room, and I kind of like this first one where those two are next to each other in the front and I think maybe that would work better if you switched the living room with the multi-purpose and gym mm -hmm. but that's something that we can look at just to have a little bit more separation of space because I can't imagine it would be fun to leave a group therapy setting and then be inundated with people from the gym or something like that yeah and then I really like your inspo pictures. And I think that we'll be doing cool stuff with the furniture because I think it lends itself to a lot of like safety codes and there's not a lot of harsh corners and stuff, which, which will be fun to work with. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much what I had. I was wondering if maybe the detox rooms need to be a little bit more medical, but um. I don't know if they're not one of your focus spaces, so I don't want you to like bog yourself down with that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do some more research because I was kind of thinking the same thing if I didn't make it as medical as it needed to be. Yeah, but I'm definitely because I like the that. three levels of like rooming where it's right when you're in there going through it and then the the single rooms to me are more of like a halfway sober living situation. So I like the idea of that. I'm just wondering if maybe the detox needs to be like more hospital room than mm -hmm. single bed. Definitely. Yeah, those are those are all my comments for now. There's presentation stuff that I'll tell you offline and <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Sounds good. Thank you. That's great. How about anyone else? Would anyone else um, from our external critics? I have to imagine Amanda would have something to say. Oh, she already unmuted. I was going to say. I know. Because <laughs> this, is, this is close to you. And you're actually, I shared your document with some of the students from the research you did as an undergrad. Yeah, exactly. Well, first and foremost, hi to everyone, um, all my professors that I haven't seen in a while. Good to see you. And hi to Grace. Um, yeah, I think this is a really great presentation. I think you really thought through this thoroughly. Um, I really enjoy the location that you chose. Um, I'm from out that way, so I definitely know okay. first and foremost that there are not a lot of um, treatment centers out there. So I think that was a great no. location choice. Um, the way you laid out your floor plan was very thoughtful from you know how the user comes into the space. Um, and how they, their journey is. I think that's super important, um, especially in this type of facility um, because of security reasons and just overall look and, or like feel when you come in, you don't wanna feel like you're being, you know, like taken into like a prison. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, and overall spatially, I think you did a really great job laying it out um, from an ADA compliance standpoint. Um, everything was really thoughtful. Uh, the only thing I would say is, um, actually, no, 
Never mind, you're good. I was going to say that entry looks a little small, but I think you covered um, ADA compliance there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you brought your design concept really well throughout the whole presentation, and you touched upon it as you spoke um, about each space. And um, I'm really excited to see what your final looks like. So keep going. Good job. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. Let's keep going. Job. I have a couple quick comments, actually, if that's okay. Oh, sorry. Go, yes. oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go for it. Go, Kat. <laughs> um, I thought it was great. You covered a lot of scope. It's a massive project, so huge props to that. Yeah. Um, the, I, I thought of a precedent that might um, inspire you a little bit mm -hmm. that you could actually go see um, at Mass General Hospital, like the main campus in Boston, mm -hmm. uh, the newer buildings, the Lunder building. I believe it was MBBJ that did that design. Um, but the interior lobby space is very biophilic. They have like plants hanging from the ceiling. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Um, it just, it reminded me of a lot of what you're doing with these little atriums and little like pocket park kind of moments. Um, I know there's a lot of very strict rules when it comes to like the patient room furniture. Mm -hmm. Um, but based on your concept, I would challenge you a little bit with some of like the ancillary areas, especially because you're trying to create this kind of dissipate the gap between indoors and outdoors. Think about bringing in some outdoor furniture inside. Um, it's been, it's like a very popular thing in like warmer climates, but mm -hmm. working on some projects where clients have really been liking outdoor furniture inside and it's. Um, some of the materiality, it's a little bit more durable, so it's could potentially work well for a healthcare setting um, and some of those ancillary spaces. But yeah, really great job. I love all the branding that you did too. Um, just presentation-wise and the layouts and the colors and really great job. I'm excited to see where you take it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kat. Glad we got you in. <laughs> and that's a great example. Sorry. I Rose, sorry to interrupt. I had one last oh, comment. Go ahead, go. Um, I just had noted, um, just if you want to go back to your design problem, um, typically, and Rose, you can correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> um, typically the design problem is, you know, what you're trying to find a solution to. Um, so I would, I would try to think of um, how to incorporate, like, what the design problem actually is, um, mm -hmm. opposed to your um, maybe some things that you're struggling with with like the project itself. Um, maybe think about like what the actual design problem is, which is typically what recovery centers are right now, right? You're trying to think of a modern way. So may, you may want to rethink that wording and then open it up to like your presentation afterwards to find the solution. That was my last comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Amanda. And it would be good, too. I mean, I think you articulated it, but I don't think I agree with Amanda. I don't think they lined up with your tax. So that's that's mm -hmm. great. All right. Let's. Um, oh, I was going to say, I think Nicole Ward is an external advisor who um, worked on um, the precedent that um, Kat referenced. So um, I know her firm did that. So if you do want to reach out, she's going to be on later in the day. Great. Thank you. All right. Actually, like 10 minutes ahead. I, I just jinxed us by saying that out loud. I know it, but let's keep going. <laughs> All right, Casey. All right. Let me pull up my screen. Look okay. Okay. 
Um, so hi, I'm Casey. This is my midterm project for Revive Wellness Cruise. Um, just a quick introduction. I wanted to thank my thesis advisor, Stephanie, my professor at school, and Jillian, my external thesis advisor. She is a designer at the SLAM Collaborative, and she's been extremely helpful throughout this entire process. So why did I decide to design a cruise ship? So initially, um, I wanted to design a ship because um, I have a family member that's an engineer on a ship and ships are a very big part of my life. Um, but after talking with Rose um, in pre-thesis, she thought that designing a cruise ship would be better because of my interest in hospitality design. So when she said that, I was kind of not very excited because when I think of cruise ships, I think of this picture on the right, like crowded, typically overindulgent it, within food, drinking, partying. Um, and I am a quiet person that likes my own personal space and I enjoy wellness activities. So a cruise ship did not seem like something I wanted to be part of. But then I realized that I could make it into something that I would enjoy. Um, so I have some um, information on the left here to kind of prove my point. Um, I did three precedent studies for my pre-thesis document. And all three had a bar, casino, restaurant, and they did include some um, fitness centers. But all the other activities were just they might include one here and there of um, extracurricular activities such as art-based classes or meditation. And I wanted that to be the main focus of my project. So my project demographics, my targeted market is health conscious individuals. And in the millennial range, you'll see this um, chart below. And this was from um, Mintel database where they um, surveyed cruise goers from 2019 to 23, and the majority of the people going on the cruise, cruises were millennials, which I was surprised to see. I, I usually think older generations. So that's who I'm targeting. And then I also, kind of how Talia explained, um, addiction is such a, a large pandemic right now. I want to provide people that um, have gotten to a sober lifestyle and activity where they don't have to worry about relapse. They can go on vacation comfortably. Um, so the location of my cruise, um, obviously it's moving. So I, um, as far as views and, and things like that, I have to consider that 360, but, um, the port I chose is out of Massachusetts, and I decided to choose that because there's a study done by the Share Care Community Wellbeing Index, and Massachusetts ranked number one for the top um, for three consecutive years as the healthiest state in the U.S., um, and this was based on a number of criteria um, such as community well-being, health well-being, um, access to food, things like that. So I thought Massachusetts would be great and Boston is our biggest city and um, we have Flynn's Cruise Port um, and it's also adjacent to Logan at International Airport. So people from the New England area that might wanna fly in from Vermont, New Hampshire, um, the port is right there for them to then go on their trip. So the vessel that I will be Using is the Windstar Star Pride uh, cruise ship. Uh, it's a luxury cruise ship. The bottom has some of the existing um, conditions. It is 522 feet long and 63 feet wide. My concept for this project is sea salt. Um, the opacity and shape of sea salt guide the playful design of revived cruise lines. Just like how sea salt is calming, has the calming effect to our body, revived cruise lines 
New space will use natural light and soft colors, creating a relaxing environment where visitors can focus on their health and goals. And then this is my part T. Um, I looked at sea salt under a microscope and all of these really cool shapes popped up and I then made a model um, and was really inspired by some of the shapes that I came up with and how I intend to uh, use my concept is, is textures with but also light so using negative spaces and allowing the light to come in because like I said um, light will become it, the ship's moving so light will be kind of circulating circulating the whole the whole ship um, on the right here I have a picture of a salt room which will be incorporated through um, each stateroom floor where people can go in and meditate. Salt rooms have um, tremendous health benefits for your respiratory and skin health. So I wanted to incorporate that into this design. And I'm also really influenced by cubism. Um, I thought it played really well into my concept and I love geometric shapes. So I want to incorporate that within my design. Um, I will be using well building um, standards for my project. I thought it fit really well with what I was trying to accomplish. I've highlighted the areas that I'd like to incorporate um, within a cruise ship that the air ventilation system is crucial because it's all circulating. And if one person gets sick, everyone gets sick. So I want to make sure that I'm thinking of the mechanics within that system. I also want to um, focus on nutrition, having healthy meals, not those typical buffets that are served on cruise ships, as well as various fitness options and access to water. So this is my stacking diagram. Um, I'm gonna start from the third deck and go up. The third deck um, includes restaurants, cooking classes, and art classes. The fourth deck has um, the art classic suite, I'll go further into a salt room, a lounge, and our deluxe suite. Going up a floor, same um, suites and lounge spaces, but we have the reception and theater space and towards the uh, bow of the boat, there's gonna be a cold plunge hot tub area. Up another floor, the same rooms, but with the spa and yoga meditation studio. The seventh deck is open, um, so we'll have the locker rooms, juice bar, pool, fitness center, and rock climbing. And then the top deck will have um, the cafe and library space, as well as a music lounge. This is my occupancy. So just the decks that I'm designing are 114,000 square feet, so it, it's pretty large. Um, and there is various occupancy types throughout, so assembly, educational, business, um, merchantile, a whole bunch of, of different occupancies. Um, I will be considering ADA throughout my design. 5% total of the rooms are going to be ADA compliant. We'll have uh, elevators, a pool ramp, and ADA public restrooms and showers. Um, I also have to take into consideration Asian um, International Maritime Organization and safety of life at sea codes. Um, ships don't have a standard state building code. They have um, international codes. So I have had to kind of learn a whole new system. Um, my focus areas will be the state rooms, the reception area, and then the pool deck. And I'll go into those. This is deck three. So I'm gonna start at the stern, which is the back of the boat. Um, there's a an area for um, mechanical. Then we get into the galley. You have our cooking and art classes and the restaurant, as well as officer accommodations. Um, I've put these on the third deck because these are gonna be the noisiest areas um, and I wanna keep them separated from the rest of the um, the occupants. The floor, um, sorry, down below I have a custom light fixture that I'd like to 
keep um, that I like to put within my restaurant area above the tables. Um, this is just a play on my concept with the kind of playful cubes. The fourth deck, um, it has our deluxe suites, which are 800 square feet. The classic suites, which are 420 square feet, our ADA rooms, our salt rooms, and then they're just sort of mirrored. Deck five is the um, my focus deck. So um, starting from the stern, we have the outdoor deck, we have a theater, a reception space. So people will come in from the gangway or the, the ramp up here and into this area to check in. From there, they can go down to their rooms, um, which are a mix of deluxe and classic suites. Here are the state rooms. So um, like I said, this is the deluxe state room which is a two bedroom, two bath. Um, and as you walk in, you're greeted by a bathroom on the, on the right. And then on the left, you have one of the bedrooms. If you go straight on, there's a living space with a dining area and a wet bar. Um, the, the window here, um, or this area here will, here will be a huge window so people can take advantage of the, the views. And then, the room closest to the um, the windows will have its own private bathroom. The classic suite is 420 square feet, and that just has your standard bedroom and bathroom. And I will have these dividing doors that will divide the living room space if maybe you're um, staying with someone and they want to use the living room space while you're sleeping. Um, you can easily close those doors. Up here, I have a millwork idea that I'd like to incorporate. Um, it's a bunch of cabinetry. Um, and then these two doors here pull out and then close in. So if you have a bunch of stuff all over the place, you can just close it away and you don't have to look at it. Um, and these are some of my material selections that I've um, picked out based off my concept, but also uh, my Zen aesthetic that I'm going for. The reception space here will have restrooms, the reception with a small travel area. So if people are curious about their, um, the attractions in Bermuda and have questions, they're not going to bog down reception. They can just go to the travel section sure. here. We have a health clinic. I kept this in the reception area because I thought if there's an emergency, people would know to go there. And then we have a small little gift shop. And these are some of the selections. This is a a, a concrete um, material with some aggregate stones within it, which I thought played well into my wellness idea of, because of all the health healing benefits of stones. And these will be on the reception counters. Um, this would be the reception desk base. And then I have some vinyl flooring that I picked out. Because of the there are weight limits, I have to be very particular with the materials that I'm selecting. So heavy stones like a uh, tile would weigh down the boat. So I've gone with vinyl flooring because it's also easier to clean. And this is a drawing or sketch of um, the main stairway in the, cent the center here. So playing within my concept, having glass panels that the light shines down and hopefully creates these beautiful shadows with within the floor or on the floor. Deck six has um, the spa and meditation center along with all the other rooms and a small deck space. Deck seven has the gym in the back the gym um, will have like a reception space with weights and cardio equipment you can then go on to the back deck here or you can go into this um, small studio space for group classes you can also enter in the cold therapy room or the sauna there's rock climbing within with on or on the stacks 
and that will be accessed through deck seven. You can also access the pool. Um, so this is a hot tub right here and this is the pool. And I plan on having a ramp to come up along here for ADA access. This is my smoothie bar and then a woman's and men's locker room and then the bridge, which is only accessible to the crew. I have some um, inspirational images here. So this is um, what I envision the gym to look like, just very zen-like. And then for my juice bar, I want it to be open to the pool deck, but I also want to keep it its own thing. So I was really inspired how they um, kept it open to the rest of the deck, but it also feels like its own little space. Um, I also found this really interesting cork decking material. Um, typically they use a, a different type of decking, but because of the sustainable, sustainability aspect of this project, I did want to go with the cork. And then my last deck, deck eight, um, has the cafe library, um, this is the pool void where people can look down and see people swimming in the music lounge as well as the rock climbing. Um, these areas here will have outdoor furniture um, for different seating ar arrangements. Um, this is a custom furniture piece that I'm going to make. I was really inspired by these kind of blocky weird furniture shapes. Um, and I also found this beautiful material that looked just like my party. So I wanted to do different material selections and have all these different types of seating to make it enjoyable for everyone. Um, thank you. And I have a couple questions for um, everyone. Um, two of them are, does the floor plan reflect my concept? And is there any specific area in my design process that you think needs more development? Great, thank you, Casey. That was that was wonderful. You made me laugh in the beginning about your. Uh, <laughs> I, knew, I I knew it, but I didn't know you were that opposed to it. <laughs> but clearly, you solved the problem. Yeah. I'm gonna open it up to your external advisor to start and kick us off, Jillian. Casey, this looks awesome. Definitely a lot of progression since we've talked last, um, and things are looking great. Um, I think it's definitely a huge challenge to basically redefine what people think of when they think of going on a cruise ship. So, um, you know, that's a that it's a big challenge and obviously a big ship. So you've you've bitten off a lot, but I think it's definitely uh, coming through. Um, one thing that did catch my eye is you mentioned cubism, which um, you had never mentioned before specifically um and i was like oh that's interesting and new <laughs> um but i i feel like i want to see just a little more of that because you mentioned it and i was like oh that makes perfect sense you know with the salt and the kind of you know your salt under the microscope look and everything and then i was like okay let's see how this is going to percolate through and i feel like maybe you kind of add a little layer even if it's just you know in your maybe you have a slide about you're having an artwork package um, and this is some of the artwork that I'm including or, or something. I feel like you can maybe ramp up the cubism because I got excited okay. <laughs> about it and I want to see more. Okay, definitely. Um, just a technical thing. If you can go to deck three, mm -hmm. I think it would probably just from a use standpoint, it would be useful to have your galley and your restaurant adjacent to each other. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you can kind of flip flop where the art classes and cooking classes are in the restaurant are just so they're, they're linked. Um, I definitely I, saw that um, when I was putting together my presentation, I was like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> so definitely, thank you. <laughs> um, also the progression of finishes, I know we were kind of just, you were just starting to kind of gather finishes uh, when we talked last. So I think, you know, things are looking really good. Um, I love that fabric that you found with the little kind of salty, salty bits. So that one's perfect. <laughs> um, in terms of the cork flooring, again, I know we don't have to get too far into like realness. Um, but one thing that does come to mind for that, especially on cruise ships, everybody's dragging their lounge chairs 
every which um, way, everywhere. Um, and I might just get a little nervous about gouging um, and just durability because that's a huge, literally, I think every night there's a certain time of day when there, there's like crew who specifically sets all the loungers back where they're supposed to go. And that happens every day um, because everybody, you know, everybody wants to orient the sun and all this. And so there's lots of movement happening, especially on the outer decks and they're just dragging them. So um, I appreciate, you know, not using the, the kind of bolete or the kind of more classic um, ship flooring for, uh, you know, an environmental sustainability type standpoint, because that I'm sure that is not the greenest product. Um, but again, just from, you know, it, however much we're basing in reality, um, I do think gouging might be an issue with the cork. Um, what else did I have on my list? Oh, you had mentioned incorporating some sauna cold plunge kind of hot cold therapy at one point. Did that? Yeah. Is that in the, it's in, where did that end up? Oh, right here. It's on deck five. I might have uh, just forgot to mention it, but um, it is, I, I took the same shape as my pool and then I just have the, the cold plunge in the hot tub um, on the bow of deck five. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that that didn't go away because I think that's <laughs> great. <clears throat> um. Also for your smoothie bar, I think that's awesome. Uh, the precedent image that you have there where like you're saying it's it's um, open but still its own. Um, I wonder if you might, especially, you know, there's hundreds of people on the ship. <clears throat> I wonder if you might be able to have multiple kind of satellite things like that so that that's not mm -hmm. the one opportunity. Um, and, may, you know, maybe they're sprinkled throughout the ship. Maybe you have some more inside and outside. But um, that's a lot of people and not a lot of smoothie bar. So I think you could do more of those. And I think they can be small. And I can I think they can be kind of sprinkled. Okay. Um, but I think that's kind of your, you know, your redefining what it means to cruise. And the overindulgence of a classic cruise ship can still kind of be redefined where you can still do that. It's just not alcohol. You're, you're just going to have, Oh, I'm going to have a pineapple juice at this one. And I'm going to have a, you know, you can still kind of do a pub crawl, yeah. but it just doesn't have alcohol. You know what I mean? Um, so that just might be another opportunity to sort of sprinkle it through. Um, what else did I have on here? Yeah, no, I think everything is looking great. And um, like I said, you've progressed a long way. And it's amazing that this is only midterms. Um, so I'm excited to see where you're going next. Thank you. So true, Jillian. I can't believe it's midterm either. And <laughs> that, and also, you know, the amount of work, it's exciting. Where are they going to take it? How about any of our other external critics? Would you like to um, contribute to any comments to Casey's uh, project? Good job, Casey. Thank you. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Good, good. All right. So now we are at um, Shannon. Let me share my screen. Great. I'm going to go on. Oh. Okay. And. Where does it present? Am I missing? Am I missing it? Um, I no, you're good. You're good. You just have to do um start slideshow. There you go. Go next one and just start it. Let's see. One more over. There you go. Oh. Oh, but it's not on the full screen. Huh. You can oh. click on the bottom right, Shannon, where like the zoom is, that icon. 
like right next to the zoom button. It looks like a little trophy or something. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to like move the zoom out of the way to find it. It's right next to the minus in the zoom on the bottom right. Oh, oh I yeah. think I think that's the button, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's a pull down presentation screen for you people who are too young to know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> like what can I figure <laughs> out? Your screen that you pull down. <laughs> oh. Okay, I got it figured out. So good morning or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shannon McNally, and I will be presenting my midterm thesis, a resource for substance abuse center. So I just wanted to take a second to thank my external and internal thesis advisors, Amanda and Abby. Amanda is an interior designer at SGA in Boston, Mass. And Abby is also an assistant assistant teaching professor here at UMass, and they are both NCIDQ certified. So a little bit about my location. Um, so it's located in Lawrence, Mass, Marston Medical Center on the fourth floor. It's um, about 5,059 square feet. And the original space was a primary care doctor's office. And it is also a former textile mill built in the late 1800s. And it is a great location for the center because Lawrence General Hospital is also right across the street. And it is right off Highway 495. And there is there is a train station right down the street, plenty of bus routes, and also there's plenty of restaurants along the area as well. And there's also a beautiful river right in the back to take a nice walk around too. So these are my existing images. So as you can see on the walls where just the windows are, it is all exposed brick. Um, and there's plenty of windows on the exteriors as well to let a bunch of sunlight pour in as well throughout the day. And then, so for my codes, so my occupancy type is an institutional building, group one. Um, the occupancy load is 52 people. So because there's 52 people, I needed two exits located right here and right here. And then I also needed to put in three regular bath bathrooms and then one DA, one ADA bathroom um, per code. So this is my client design problem. Um, so my client is the a resource for substance abuse center, and it is a community-based outpatient program. And I would say my design problem was finding a way to keep all the clients safe from outside some substances entering the center, but also making them feel safe and not like they're being like patted down, like right as they come in the door. So my precedent study that I was inspired by was um, Greater Boston Addiction Centers in Needham, Mass. I was inspired by them because they have a wide range of rehabilitation programs and they also offer a wide range of substance abuse treatment as well for multiple um, substance abuse drugs. Um, it is also affordable treatment and medically assisted treatment is provided. And their main um, goal and priority is a comfortable and safe environment given to all clients. And that is something that I really wanted to um, pursue as well in my project. And these are just some of the um, images of Greater Boston Addiction Centers inside. And they have some couches, some TVs, and some tables for people to gather around and sit comfortably in. So this is my certification. So I chose the well building and I chose the well standard because it is, it is important that people's health and wellness are at the center of design, especially for an outpatient rehab center. And then I just, I checked off yeses and noes, things that I will be and may not be including in the project. So my concept is the American elm tree. It symbolizes strength, resilience, hope, growth, rebirth, and rebirth and renewal. And American elm trees are known for their sturdy, deep rooted trunks and beautiful wide canopy leaves. And the roots, the roots are also deeply embedded into the foundation of the ground and can withhold harsh weather conditions. And I thought that really symbolized with a lot of the clients that will be coming in 
to the um, outpatient program because they have obviously been through a lot mentally, physically, and they are very strong people and they're strong people for stepping up and actually wanting to get some help as well. And those are just some inspiration images at the bottom that I wanted to include. Um, so I wanted to include a game room for people to gather and come together as one. My reception desk, I wanted it to be circular, the main, known as like the main trunk of the space. And then my group therapy room as well. And uh, um, a lot of the furniture choices too. And here I was inspired by as well. So for my block and bubble diagrams, they represent the American elm tree by the functional layout of the design. So the game room, group therapy, and aftercare home support, they act as the trunk of the tree as well, while all of the spaces around act as the um, canopy leaves of the tree. So this is my furniture plan and it's the development of the floor plan. Um, and these are the highlighted areas that I will be focusing on as well. I also plan to round out the um, corners of the game room, aftercare, home support, and group therapy. I wanted to round them to create that tree trunk and to create that center, um, that center space where everyone can come together, known as the game room, group therapy, and even aftercare when they all come back. So this is my um, focus area for the reception. So I have the key up in the right corner where it is actually located. This is a another inspiration image, um, what I kind of wanted to get the feel for, so a private reception and waiting area and also a circular reception desk. These are the materials that I also want to include, and I just pointed out where I will be including them in the space. Um, very natural, cool, and warm-toned colors as well. So this is my focus area game room. Um, I have a community room to gather multiple seating areas as well for people to come together um, while they're just waiting to go into a program. Um, if they're waiting to go into a counseling session, they can come together, work, um, pass some time in here, talk to other people that may obviously be going through what they are going through as well. Um, I wanted to put carpet in the game room just to um, mask some of the sounds and the noises that may be happening. And then I also wanted to use leather um, leather upholstery just for cleaning purposes and durability as well. And um, right here, I was like, what was I gonna mention? This is a curtain wall. Um, and I think I'm going to add more glass or frosted glass around just so the people at the reception area are able to keep an eye on some of these people while they are in the game room. So this is my focus area for the office. I wanted a functional, simplistic office layout. Um, and again, the exposed brick is in most of these um, spaces as, as well, just on the windows. Um, and I continued with the wood laminate wood flooring as well. Um, green upholstery, I wanted to use more nature colors as well. And then this is my focus area for the group therapy. So the group therapy room, it has more cool toned finishes. Some may feel that the group therapy program is kind of out of date as we are coming up along. And, um, it is, but I feel as though group therapy is the anchor point of substance abuse programs. And it is what people think of first when you kind of think of a rehab program. And I think this is like the first step coming and being vulnerable, breaking yourself down to build yourself back up. And I do think it is an important program in the, um, in the center. And that is why I want to have it as my focus area. And I also did not mention, I had some notes off to the side that I was skipping, but I also didn't mention 
Um, the reason for this project also is it definitely hits a little close to home. I have lost a close friend due to drug overdose. And I've also watched my best friend overcome overdose um, or substance abuse. And I feel as though where I'm from, I'm, I'm from Methuen and it is right next to Lawrence and the opioid crisis in Lawrence, Methuen, Haverhill, surrounding areas, it's increasing like by the year. And like Talia said before, there's not many centers in Massachusetts and not many affordable centers for these people that are in low com low income um, communities. And so I really wanted this to be a community center that is accessible for many people to go to, many people feel comfortable to. Um, and I just thought, you know, maybe if, maybe if this was built before, obviously you don't know, but maybe my friends would have came here to get some help and they maybe could have fought the addiction earlier on. So that is just my reason for this. And that concludes my presentation. Um, any comments, questions, I'm open to them. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Shannon. And um, such a noble, um, you know, reason for picking this as your thesis topic. And that's part of the goal is what you can do exploratory as a design student. Hopefully you can have an impact when you enter the field and, um, you know, make some changes. So I'm going to toss it over to Amanda, who's your external thesis advisor. Thank you both. And I think you hit a good point there. Um, finding the design problems with these um, types of centers is super important because, um, as you know, like going into those spaces, they seem very drab and, you know, uninviting. And when you think of addiction, there's a big stigma. Um, with them. So creating spaces that are more um, inclusive and um, more inviting is super important. And this is the first step. So um, having smaller centers um, throughout, you know, the United States like this would encourage a lot more people to seek treatment. And um, I think that you've come up really long way from the first time we spoke about this project and um, how you thought about it as a whole um, has come together. And I'm um, excited to see it go further. If you want to go to um, your concept slide, I think, um, you know, bringing this kind of concept throughout your whole design presentation um, will benefit you because it has a strong meaning and how you're going to incorporate that into, um, or you, how you already incorporated that into your uh, floor plan and how you're going to um, digress that concept into each room and space, I think will benefit you um, as you dive into your different focus areas. Um, overall, I think that you really thought out each space and how it's going to be different. Um, so I think going further in the next step, we can definitely work on um, the graphics and how you're going to enhance this and kind of make it feel all cohesive. Um, but overall, I think you did a really good job. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, I see Lauren's hand up. Please jump in, Lauren. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to say that your location is really spot on. I think the city of Lawrence is in true need of some support. Um, it's funny because my office is actually working on two affordable housing projects in Lawrence, and they are renovations of old um, factory mills. So I thought that was really cool that you chose that location. What building is it that you're redesigning? It's the stone mill. Is it across from the train station? It's across from the hospital. Okay. I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's a really fun project. I'm having a lot yeah. of fun with it. Yeah. Those buildings um, are beautiful. I know. It's my favorite kind of project. And I'm just so passionate about it. So I'm glad you're choosing, you know, 
a really old building. It's probably been a, abandoned for so long. And mm -hmm. I'm glad you're kind of reusing it for something that's the city truly needs. So props for that. Thank you. Um, I just have one last comment. Um, so mill buildings are very challenging to tackle because there are, is like so many assisting factors that you have to kind of work with, like assisting columns, assisting walls and all of that. And so I like how you're embracing some of the assisting finishes, such as like the brick walls and incorporating some of the natural wood tones. Thank you. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because um, I thought that was really um, great of what Shannon did with the space. I challenged her at the beginning and uh, made sure she was aware of the existing columns in the building. And I think she did a really great job um, utilizing the space and um, figuring out how it would work with the existing com uh, columns as is. So kudos to that. Thank you. Good job. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you, Lauren. That's fun that you can make that connection also from your professional experience working on it. Anyone else for comments to keep Shannon move until our final, only a month away, hard to believe. Yeah. I just have a quick, quick thing. Um, I really like how right at the last second you said, by the way, I'm going to curve those corners um, because I think that is perfectly, you have the slide up now, you know, that's perfectly hitting your concept. And I'm wondering just as you get into um, kind of ceiling and thinking about the whole space, if you can kind of incorporate somehow that kind of tree thing, because, uh, you know, you have, you're talking about the trunk and you kind of have that. Um, I think pretty well represented, you know, in your reception and your center being curved. Um, but I think kind of the top of the tree can kind of be your next zone, maybe when you're getting into um, RCP and the whole space itself. So just, I guess, something to think about. I also, um, I guess I didn't mention, I am going to do a, a circular soffit drop down above the reception so the circulation continues yeah. to go um i can i can go to my like right here so i'm gonna bring a soffit like right around and curve it just how the desk is and then i'm gonna add um wording on it as well on the bases of it so i definitely agree with you on that great good points and Nice to think about that canopy protecting that population. I love it. All right. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you so much for your comments. They didn't scare me. <laughs> <laughs> good. We don't want anyone to be scared. We want you to keep moving on. All right. So for our final um, presentation for our first group, we have Lily. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Great. All right. Um, so hi, my name is Lily Cummings and I'm presenting my uh, midterm thesis presentation. So I have a little bit of a surprise for Stephanie and my advisor, Lauren. Um, this was a very last minute thing, but I changed my concept completely. <laughs> Um, so I know that, um, I had talked to them about my original concept and I was trying to find a way to work it into my design and everything and it wasn't working. So last night I had a thought and I kind of just ran with it. So I'm going to be presenting to you my, um, project, which is called the circle of life. So my, um, introduction is that my project is focusing on, um, here, let me move the zoom thing. Oh, I guess not. Um, okay. My project is focusing on helping the homeless population and the housing crisis, and also including um, sustainability aspect to it with the technology of 3D printed homes. It's a big up and coming thing. It's becoming more popular and it's 
really interesting to to research to look at um, and how all of it speeds up construction processes and you're able to just build a whole community at a time. Um, so the creation of these 3D printed homes will give a lot of people homes, especially with the uh, rapidly, sorry, the Zoom thing is in the way, uh, rapidly growing populations and um, immigrations and also fighting homelessness. The sustainability of the materials used and also the reduced construction time can help these houses go up much quicker and create whole communities. Um, so here I just included two of my precedent studies. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, so the one on the left is a home that was um, made for a design challenge and just um, includes a lot of really cool architecture, very futuristic. So you can kind of get an idea of what they can do with this technology. And then the one on the right is in Riverhead, New York, and it was built with one of the leading um, printed home companies, SQ4D. So I thought these were really cool. And I included these in my last semester's research for my precedents. Okay. <laughs> um, so my site location is 50 Oriole Drive in Worcester. Um, throughout my last semester and doing all my research, I found out that Worcester, unfortunately, still has a very large homeless population. And I wanted to do something to kind of help fight it. And they do have homeless shelters, but they're all overflowing with people and they don't have any more capacity. So I wanted to kind of build a better solution um, using the technologies and just kind of help them get back up on their feet and renew um, renew and restart their lives is really what I want um, the focus of this to be. So my site information, like I said, it's um, in Worcester, it's three miles from the DCU center two miles from the local UMass hospital. It's right next to their local elementary school in Worcester, and it's walking distance to several shopping plazas, restaurants. Um, there's stop and shop right next door. So there's a lot of um, resources that they have in the area. So for my sustainability, I'm going to be using um, LEED and how some uh, things of how I'm going to be putting this into use with my uh, design and location are access to transit, community resources, environmentally preferable products, and durability management. So my concept, my new concept is the circle of life. Um, I chose this because it will take shape in my design and um, have little elements here and there. Uh, the rings that I put to the right are kind of how I put a little example of how in the my community center, I wanted to um, show wayfinding like on the floors. So kind of have that help people out, know where they need to go. Um, and it will take shape by showing movement and also um, trying back to the uh, tying back to the residents of this community after all the hardships they've been through. Um, a lot of things, unfortunately, can lead to homelessness. So I want this to be a renewal for the residents that live there. And I found this that um, this quote that I really liked when I was doing a little bit more um, digging on the circle of life. It says the circle represents the continuous cycle of life with seasons, day and night, and the repeating patterns in nature. This cyclinal, cyclinical aspect implies that events and experiences are recurring, allowing for growth, renewal, and transformation. So for my Part T, um, I just did sketches, but by the end of the semester, I will have a full model and I will be exploring the technology that we have on campus with the 3D printer 
So I wanted to create a mini model of a home and have that to go along with um, my presentation. So for my community center that I'm designing, um, this is the first floor. So here you enter, and then I chose to have a mini market, um, and then a fitness center over here. And the whole point of these things that I'm putting into the community center are to kind of help people and start their lives and just have more of a routine and have resources available to them. So that's why I'm having, I'm including a mini market in my community center um, so they can just get things for cheaper costs, um, necessities, stuff like that. And then a fitness center for more of a wellness aspect, um, just to kind of, if they want to better themselves or feel better, you know. And then the second floor, I'm not fully designing, but I have a recovery and rehab center and then a thrift store where they could get um, clothing at little to no costs. And then for my 3D printed homes that I'm uh, designing, I did three different layouts. So you'll see here, I'm starting out with my three bedroom home and this is the first floor. Um, so you have the entryway and then to the left, there is a washer and dryer and a coat closet. To the right, I have my pantry and you see up there's uh, their kitchen area. There's a regular bathroom. And then if you go down the hallway, um, you have the master bathroom and their master bedroom. And then... Um, I have the living room and dining room area and then stairs to go up for the second floor. And then this is the second floor. So you come up the stairs and there's a hallway and then you have uh, two other bedrooms and they each have closets with them. So uh, what I wanted to do was not create a full second floor, but uh, like a loft almost. So the part where you can see the living room from downstairs, it's open to below and there's a railing where the stairs are. And then my two bedroom um, home layout, I have the living room, dining area, uh, kitchen with an island, and then a pantry. And then um, same thing to the right, there's a washer and dryer and a coat closet. And then I have a main bathroom on the first floor. Second floor, same thing. It's a lofted second floor, so it's open to below on this arched part. Um, I have the master bed, a regular bathroom, and a master bathroom, and then another bedroom. And each of the bedrooms both have their own closets and, like, separate spaces. And then um, my one-bedroom home, the living room here on this arched part, because I really wanted to take advantage of... Um, the window space that I could add, letting in a bunch of natural light, dining room here, and then kitchen, and they have their walk-in pantry. There's a, a main bathroom, and then you go into this little uh, nook over here, and there's a master bath with their own closet, or master bed, and then they have a master bathroom as well. So it's a little bit hidden from um, the public eye. And then my focus area, I'm going to focus on uh, one of the homes and it's going to be the three bedroom home. So I showed both floors here, just so you can see uh, next to each other, kind of how they're laid out. And then just uh, a feeling that I want this to be a cozy, like safe place for these people. And they'll have a bunch of resources available to them. Uh, the mini market um, kind of showed pictures, like inspiration pictures of um, a smaller market, not like a full grocery store. I wanted this, like I said um, earlier in my presentation, that I just wanted this to be a smaller area where they could uh, get their general goods, um, food and supplies, stuff like that. 
And then the fitness center, um, also more inspiration pictures of what I want the fitness center to be like. I want this to be somewhere um, where they want to work out and kind of want to better themselves, um, but isn't insanely large or, and I, especially people who might be starting out at the gym, didn't want it to be somewhere that's too intimidating. And that's my presentation. I'm open to all the comments and questions. Great, thank you so much, Lily. And I think we'll um, start with Lauren, your external advisor. Great job. I love this surprise concept. <laughs> Because I know you were struggling with that so much, and I was struggling too. <laughs> so um, I'm glad to see you finally nailed it down. And I think it speaks really well to your programming and your topic. I also love the idea of 3D printing the houses, because I feel like it's always a struggle for the town or the state to provide housing to the homeless at an affordable cost. And 3D print printing is pretty affordable and it doesn't take that much time to build something. So that's a really cool idea that you've incorporated into your thesis. Thank you. If you want to go back to your floor plan of the amenity spaces, I just want to take a look at the first floor. Yeah, so I think the programming looks really good. I like how you have mainly the public um, amenity spaces on the first level and the fitness space is looking really nice. I like how you have the locker rooms next to each other and then you kind of have like a central zone for all of the equipment. Um, the mini market is kind of front and center. So I'm wondering if you could benefit from maybe doing some interior storefront, just kind of making that more of a focal point from when you like walk into the building. And then if you go to your second floor. Yeah, I love the idea of a thrift store because if you have people living on campus, you're able to kind of share that resource with them but also um, provide like an employment opportunity for them to come and work in the thrift store or even in the mini market that you have on the first floor. Yeah. But yeah, overall, really good job. And I'm excited to see more. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Thank you so much for your help. You're welcome. Great. Thanks, Lauren. Anyone else have comments to keep Lily moving? I love that you refer to it as a campus, Lauren. It's interesting because I didn't think of that at first, but it really is, you know, it's, it's you know, trying to create a community. And also I uh, forgot to mention another aspect of what I wanna do is uh, going along with my concept, I wanna have, um, or I guess in real life, my community um, homes would be in like, surrounding the uh, community center in like a circle just so everyone's kind of close to each other everyone has each other if they need um their neighbor or whoever and they also would be um close to the community center if they needed to access any of these resources well that's great lily i'm so glad you said that because i think that would really help to incorporate a sketch of a site plan that would be a great sort of, you know, intro because I was sort of missing that. So I yeah. think that would really help. So we could see this idea. And then you, as you introduce, you went right into your um, your houses, but it would be nice to see how everything like the campus is situated. That would be wonderful. Sorry, when I get nervous, I talk really fast. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Good. All right. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. All right, so group one, we officially have um, finished. 
Um, and we're early. We're we're like a whole half hour ahead of schedule. I know, huh? Unbelievable. Um, I don't know how we did that. I probably just did the numbers wrong. But special thanks to all of our external thesis advisors and um, Mongol who popped in. Fun to see Mongol participate. I know you see some of your past alumni uh, students here. And we welcome everyone's continued participation as we pick it back up after lunch. Um, and then external thesis advisors, we're going to probably do, um, we're thinking about a slightly different format for um, thesis reviews on campus um, over two or three um, different time frames. And then you would just, same thing, you would pick one and come in just for that time frame. But we'll schedule some ideas and shoot them out to you for your feedback. All right. How about Steph, Abby, you want to add anything? I feel like I've been emceeing the whole thing. <laughs> no, I was just going to say for the first group, I mean, um, as just a general comment for everyone, I think you all presented really well. I feel like when I was taking notes, almost everyone's I wrote like good verbal, really nice pace. I mean, I think everyone has some graphic things and development, obviously, with the design. But in terms of presentation, um, you know, and especially in this format that can be uh, a little intimidating. I think you all did a really great job with that. And I know we didn't get a chance to share comments, but I did for each of you write extensive notes that I can share. So I didn't want you to think I didn't like have something to say. I have so much to say. I just didn't want to take up the time of everyone else. So we'll definitely share that at some point. Yeah, I'm really impressed with everyone. You all did so good. Midterms are not easy and you crushed it. I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah, it was a, I mean, great way to start. Let's keep the momentum going and hope we feel the same way at seven o'clock tonight. No. <laughs> Sorry, you know me, the eternal, you know, just reality check, but um, great way to start. I agree. And um, I might not have taken as many notes as staff, but I was sort of thinking as I was seeing everyone go through, because some of you I haven't seen since your project since, I mean, a little bit when um, we shared studio, um, Abby and I, for our last thesis, but most of them were for pre-thesis when I see all your ideas and your research. So I'm thinking it might be nice just to touch base one-on-one um, -on -one, um, and have some more time just to you know, instead of me typing them, I might want to just sit with you and go and have like, you know, 20 minutes alone and just sit down. Great. All right, everyone. Let's take a break. Go for a walk. Thanks again for all your input. And um, we welcome your continued participation as we're in the final stretch. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.